Okay, this is the acids and bases question from September 2021 prelim chemistry paper, also known as November 2022, uh, November 2020 paper 2, the alternate paper. It says to you, two beakers A and B contain strong bases. In beaker A, there are 500 cubic centimeters of barium hydroxide of unknown concentration X. In beaker B, there are 400 cubic centimeters of potassium hydroxide of concentration 1 mole per cubic decimeter. Define a base according to the Arrhenius theory. You know in acids and bases we have two theories, the Bronsted-Lowry and the Arrhenius. You have to know them both and define them properly. So according to Mr. Arrhenius, a base forms hydroxide ions OH- in water or aqueous solution. Okay, so this is important you know both of them. Now it says to you calculate the number of moles of hydroxide ions in beaker B. Now beaker B is potassium hydroxide here. Any time we want to find the concentration or the number of moles of hydroxide ions or an acid or a base, we have to think, is this a polyprotic acid or is it a base that's going to give us two hydroxide ions? And so if we look at KOH, it will go to 1K plus aqueous, if we add water, yes, and it will give us one hydroxide ion aqueous. So the mole ratio of KOH to hydroxide ions is 1 is to 1. So this question's only two marks, so you don't have to show this, but what you should do is you should be aware that you need to show the concentrations of the iron versus the amount of the, um, the, the, mol the moles of the ions as opposed to just the moles of the complete potassium hydroxide. So because this is only two marks, it's much easier. So we'll go concentration of hydroxide ions, use the uh, formula on your data sheet, equals N over V. Why do I say this? Because if you do this wrong, you're going to get, if you rearrange your formula wrong, you will not get your marks. So the number of moles of hydroxide ions is going to be the concentration 0, 0,1 times the volume. This volume is in cubic centimeters. So 400 cubic centimeters equals 0, 0,4 cubic decimeters, or if you prefer 400 times 10 to the negative three, that is the conversion. Okay, so we should end up with 0, 0,04. Remember your unit, this is moles of hydroxide ions, okay, or OH aqueous. Now it says to you, the contents of beaker A, and beaker B are added together into beaker C. The pH, the solution in beaker C has a pH of 13. So you can see here it says pH 13. Assume that the volumes are additive. What does this mean? We put 500 cubic centimeters from A and we put 400 cubic centimeters from B. That means there are 900 cubic centimeters of liquid in C, okay? Assume that the volumes are additive and the temperature of solutions is at 25. Why are they telling you at 25? It's because pH calculations and the Kw of water standard conditions are at 25 degrees C, okay? So they're telling you that we can use the Kw and the pH concentration. Now it says to you for eight marks, you know this is not gonna be easy, one step answer. Calculate the concentration X of the barium hydroxide in beaker A. So we're trying to find something about beaker A, but we only have information about this beaker C over here. So we are going to have to work backwards. So let's see what happened here. If we want to make concentration, concentration is the number of moles per unit volume, okay? So what actually happened here? We need to find out how many moles of hydroxide ions are in this C and how many came from B and how many came from A because the number of moles from A plus the number of moles from B is going to be equal to the number of moles of hydroxide ions in C. We already know the number of moles from B because they just asked you to calculate it. This is 0, 0,04. But 
Do we know anything about C? Yes, we know the pH. And once we have the pH, we have to do the calculation. So if you get given a pH, you can be pretty sure you're going to be doing a pH calculation somewhere. So let's start with the pH calculation. We want a hydroxide ion calculation, a hydroxide ion answer, but pH depends on the hydronium ions, and that is what we use Kw for. But you will get your three marks for the pH formula, substituting in, making sure your H3O plus is in square brackets. Okay, so what is the concentration of hydronium ions in C? This is in C, okay. What is the concentration of hydronium ions? It is 1 times 10 to the negative 13. But that's not what we want. We want the concentration of hydroxide ions. So in order to find the concentration of hydroxide ions, we have to use the equilibrium constant for water. Okay, so it's the concentration of hydronium ions times the concentration of hydroxide ions, which equals 1 times 10 to the negative 14. Where are we getting this from? We are getting this from the data sheet. Okay, so then over here, we're going to put the unknown is the concentration of hydroxide ions. So by algebra, you just put in your calculator 1 times 10 to the negative 14 divided by 1 times 10 to the negative 13, and you will get the concentration of hydroxide ions in container C, which is 0 0,1 moles per cubic decimeter. You just literally have to put um, the 1 times 10 to the negative 14 over 1 times 10 to the negative 13. By the way, if you don't know how to convert this one back the other way, you put in 10 to the power of negative pH into your calculator. So it becomes 10 to the power of negative 13. That is the um, redirection of this pH formula. The concentration of hydronium ions is 10 to the negative power of the negative pH. Okay. So that's how I got this 1 times 10 to the negative 13. All right, now let's go back to where we were before I got sidetracked. We have used the Kw. We took the pH. We found the concentration of hydronium ions. We used Kw, the equilibrium constant for water, to find the concentration of hydroxide ions. But we don't want the concentration of hydroxide ions. We actually need the number of hydroxide ions, okay? Because the number of hydroxide ions from A plus the number of hydroxide ions from B is going to be equal to the number of hydroxide ions in C. So we need to go from a concentration to a number of moles. So the number of moles of hydroxide ions in C is going to be equal to the concentration times the volume. Look, I've rearranged this formula over here again. See this formula over here? We're using it again, but I've just rearranged it for convenience. So I've got 0 0,1 moles per cubic decimeter from my pH calculation. And then this volume is additive. It's 900 cubic centimeters, which is 0 0,9 cubic decimeters. Must be using the correct units. So I have 0 0,09 moles of hydroxide ions in C. So we're still trying to get back to A, but we know something about B, okay? We know something about C. So the number of moles in A plus the number of moles in B equals the number of moles in C. So I have 0 0,09 moles total in there. I calculated in the first part of this calculation that I had 0 0,04 moles in B which means the number of moles in A, okay, is 0 0,09 minus 0 0,04, which is equal to 0 0,05 moles of hydroxide ions. But now, this is where we need to pay a bit of attention, okay? We know that we have here, in this container over here, 0 0,05 moles, okay, of hydroxide ions, and they are in 500 cubic centimeters. But the problem is, if you look at the dissociation reaction, okay, if you put barium hydroxide in water and it dissociates, you get one barium two plus and two hydroxide ions. So we could go straight 
from the number of moles in A to a concentration, but it's going to give us the concentration of hydroxide ions, not the concentration of barium hydroxide. And the question asked for the concentration of barium hydroxide. So we have to use our mole ratio that the concentration of barium hydroxide, one mole of barium hydroxide, is equivalent to two moles of hydroxide ions. So if I have 0 0.05 moles of hydroxide ions, I will have half of that of barium hydroxide, 0 0.025 moles of barium hydroxide, okay? So be sure that you realize that barium hydroxide, the concentration of barium hydroxide and the concentration of hydroxide ions is not the same thing, okay? So I have 0 0.025 moles of barium hydroxide. So from there, I now have to find the moles. We know the moles, we know the volume. So I can say to you, what is the concentration of barium hydroxide in that container? It's the number of moles over the volume, 0 0.025 moles. And if you look in the question, it says to you it's 500 cubic centimeters converted to cubic decimeters, which is 0 0.5. And then my final answer will end up being 0, 0.25 divided by 0, 0, 0.025 divided by 0, 0.05. It will end up being 0, 0.05 moles per cubic decimeter. That is the concentration X of the answer here. Okay, so that is for eight marks, the answer to 7.3.1. Okay. Now it says to you, it says to you, the solution in beaker C, so this is beaker C, okay, is titrated with ethanoic acid. It was found that 15 cubic centimeters of solution C, so 15 cubic centimeters of C neutralizes 30 cubic centimeters of acid. So C is the base. I have 15 cubic centimeters of base to 30 cubic centimeters of acid, okay? It says the balanced equation for the reaction is, is ethanoic acid a weak acid or a strong acid? Give a reason for your answer. It is a weak acid. You have to learn which are the weak and strong acids. The organic acids like ethanoic acid are usually weak. It is a weak acid, why? because it ionizes incompletely, giving a low concentration of hydronium ions. Okay, gives you a low concentration of hydronium ions. Now it says calculate the concentration of the ethanoic acid. So what is important from this previous calculation? What is important is this the concentration of hydroxide ions in beaker C, which we got from the pH, and the information in the question. So I'm going to rub out all of this last calculation, okay? And we are going to calculate the concentration of the ethanoic acid. Okay, so what do we know? We know that C has a concentration of hydroxide ions, okay, equal to... 0, 0,1 moles per cubic decimeter. We got this out of the pH cal calculation and the Kw. So we know the concentration of C. This is a base, okay? We are being asked to find the concentration of the acid. This is what we don't know, okay? We have a balanced equation and it says it is titrated, okay? And the moment it says titrated, and it doesn't say, oh, it was uh, over titrated or there was excess or whatever. The moment it says titrated, you can assume they titrated it exactly unless there's something else there. And we can use the titration formula, which says the concentration of the acid times the volume of the acid over the concentration of the base times the volume of the base. Why does that say A? is equal to the number of moles of the acid over the number of moles of the base. Now this comes from the balanced equation. This uh, number of moles of acid and base comes from the balanced equation. Where from the balanced equation? 
from the coefficients. Okay, so in this case, we have one mole of uh, ethanoic acid to one mole of hydroxide ion. So on this side, I'm putting one over one. Now, this is a comparison formula. So we are not required to turn these volumes into um, SI units. So we can actually put them in there, but you can change them if you want to. So then what is this 15 cubic centimeters? It is the volume of the base. So it goes down here, 15. What is this 30 cubic centimeters? It is the volume of the acid. It goes up here. What is the concentration of the acid? That is what we're trying to calculate. What is the concentration of the base? You should get positive marking from your answers in 7.3.1, but it is 0, 0,1 from the answer to 7.3.1. Well, not the answer, but the pH calculation in there. And if you do all of your algebra correctly, you will get a concentration of the acid of 0, 0,05 moles per cubic decimeter. And that is how you calculate the concentration of the ethanoic acid.